we'd like to invite you to our YouTube channel, All People's Church Bangalore. We are pleased to make a lot of resources available on this channel. There are numerous playlists uh, that include our Sunday sermons, our TV programs, our daily devotional called Living Supernaturally, and also our Foundations course and several other playlists, uh, resources that you could use. Make sure you subscribe to this channel so that you can stay updated with all the new resources that are being released every week. And all of this is given freely to you to equip you live powerfully and victoriously for Jesus Christ. Enjoy these resources. Hey, I'm Rohan. I'm an architect, a freelance filmmaker, and I do theater. Hi, I'm Pooja. I'm a graphic designer, and I love art and music and fashion. Hi, I'm Joshua. I'm the growth lead at a medtech startup. I love playing the guitar, making music, and watching movies. I'm here today to try and understand what's okay and not with digital dependence. And I'm here to um, know about the freedom of expressing one's sexuality and preferences. With societal pressure, depression and suicide cases doing the news, I'd like to know if Christianity has something more authentic to offer. Thank you for tuning in to Living Strong and I have with me three fine young people. We have titled this entire series called as Finding Your True North. So as we journey through life, we find that morals keep shifting, values keep shifting, and the only constant unchanging truth in life is that of Jesus Christ and His Word. So we will be looking at a couple of topics uh, through the light of the Gospel, through the light of, of the Bible. And at places where the Bible is silent, we will be taking certain principles from it. And uh, we will also be looking at certain practical aspects of questions that we, uh, we have here today. For today, we have sexual purity that we're going to be dis discussing about. The next couple of weeks, uh, we will be looking into digital dependence. We will be looking into anxiety and depression and conforming to world standards. So even as we start talking about sexual purity, um, we do understand that uh, sexuality in our culture um, is, uh, is, is seen uh, as, as, as a really hot topic. And I'd like to open the forum to you to have questions asked and I'll do my best to answer them. So I think the first question I have is um, about sexuality and how we understand, perceive and act on it. I think it's it's heavily dependent on the culture we're surrounded by mm -hmm. and also by media and our peers and how they've influenced us, especially in today's generation and things that they think we all struggle with. Um, but uh, my question would be, how do we not let it influence us and what does the Bible say about it? Uh, Rowan, that's a great question. Um, so before we, we establish an answer to that, let's first of all understand that God is the designer and creator of sexuality and His Word is the source from where we understand sexuality. Um, the, the most important thing for us to remember is God is the one who's granted us those sexual desires and sexual appetites. He's the one who's given it to us, put it into our existence, which means it is good, it is holy, and He gave it to us for His glory. He gave it to us for the joy of His creation, for your enjoyment and also for, um, for reproduction of, of the race. So we do understand that uh, in, when we look at our appetites or our desires, it is something that is God given, okay? But in a context. So what is that context? The context, uh, as the Bible says, is that sexuality is honorable when it is within marriage between one man and one woman. Apart from that, it is known as sexual sin. The Bible also talks and denounces sexual immorality. So if you look through Corinthians, you will find how Paul, in his letter to the Corinthian church, um, spoke about these things. And he, he, he was telling uh, his congregation, do not be deceived about fornication, adultery, homosexuality, because it all comes under the bracket of sexual sin. And if you look further down, it says flee from sexual immorality. So what does sexual sin do? Sexual sin 
violates the sanctity of, of, of the body, violates the sanctity of what God designed it to be. And that's exactly why God does want us to keep away from it. So although it may look um, uh, hard, there are certain rules or certain, certain design that God has put into place. And that's for our protection. That's for our, for our good. And that's exactly what the Bible does talk about. Now, in all of what God has created, the most important thing for us to do is to be able to honor and glory, glorify God in whatever it may be. So it may be through our work, it may be through our relationships, it's also within sexuality as well. So the boundaries that God has kept in there is for our good. And we rejoice in those boundaries knowing that when we, when we stay in line with that, when we are influenced by what God has for us, there brings blessing through that. I hope that answered your question. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But, um, you know, like we deal with sexual urges and temptations throughout like living in this day and age. Mm -hmm. But um, as a Christian, what should we do to not let that turn into a habit? Like, because it is destructive, like you said, mm -hmm. you know, God says we should not have, like, we should curb it. So how do we do that? Okay. Um, that's, that's something that I think we need to really be careful about. And, and I'm glad that you brought that up. So as we established earlier, the fact that we have those sexual desires and that those appetites are not wrong. It is, like I said, it's God given. It's something that is there and it is, it is for the joy of his creation. But there are certain boundaries that we place over there. So what do we do? So firstly, um, I think it's important for us to have a plan. Now, what do I mean by that? Uh, to, to be careful not to put yourself in a sexually charged, emotionally charged situation. It is to avoid a situation like that. Because if you are there, there is a temptation to get into uh, a place of sexual sin. So if you, uh, let's say if you find yourself in a situation like that, you need to know what is it that you have to do. You don't stand there and wait to obey God, but be, care be sure that you will keep away from, from some of those situations. The other thing that you do is to understand the, the why of God's nose. Okay, so he does not say you should, it, it's not no sexual, uh, uh, sexual active forever. It is for a time and in the context that he spoke about. So to understand that all of God's no has a blessing also with it. So let's say if you're fantasizing about somebody, it's like a hot stove moment, you know? You know that it's hot, you back away, you get, get away from it because you know that could lead to something else. Another thing that you need to do is taking your thoughts captive because generally uh, uh, sexual sin begins with our minds, it begins with our thoughts, first of all. So as the Bible says, take to captive every thought that, that is against God. So you take into captivity those thoughts that you have. So it may be, it could, could be a fantasy or it could be just thinking about somebody. And you, you know that you need to take that into captive and replace it with, uh, with the Bible, what the Bible says in Philippians 4, 8 is to think of things that are true, noble, worthy, lovely, good report, so that you can keep yourself protected. Another way is to stay active. You know, often you, you would have understood that boredom is uh, a great place where you can get into any form of, of sin, right? So keep yourself active, do things that, that you love. So it could be sport, it could be work, it could be uh, ministry, it could be just hanging around with, with a couple of people who love God. So keep yourself active. So by that way, you have, you're taking into consideration the fact that um, uh, y your mind doesn't wander. And of course, lastly, is to feed yourself with the word. Because the word is what is our source of protection. And the more that we feed on the word, the more that we know how we need to conduct ourselves. The Holy Spirit just reminds us about what we need to do to keep ourselves safe in situations that, that could be potentially difficult. Right. This made a lot of sense, yeah. Speaking of the word, and um, I mean, I think a lot of us have, have faced this as a, as a difficulty. What does the word say about masturbation? Is that a sin? Mm -hmm. And is it talked about anywhere in the Bible? Mm -hmm. 
So that's a very bold question, it is. isn't it? <laughs> and I'm sure that's something that um, not many places do address. Yeah. But I'm glad that you brought that question up because uh, I think the church, or I think as believers, we really need to address masturbation. Um, so the Bible does not make any specific references to masturbation, but that does not mean the Bible is silent uh, about masturbation. We have certain precepts and principles that we can draw from uh, when we are thinking about masturbation in itself. Um, so to, to answer that, I'll, I'll take, take that firstly to say that masturbation violates the design of sexuality. Um, so God, when he designed sexuality, he designed it in a complementary system of between one man and one woman within marriage. So marriage is a shared experience where you get into the soul, the spirit of the other, of, of your spouse. But whereas masturbation is, is very self-absorbing, it's something that is done in private with, with just you, right? So that in itself is away from God's design. So marriage is meant to uh, bring two together, whereas in masturbation it is, it's not a shed, it's a very, it's a very personal self experience of the self. So in that way, it does violate uh, uh, God's design of, of sexuality. Uh, the other point would be that masturbation is just not a physical act. It also follows, uh, it also precedes thoughts or, or it has images or it has like a motion picture that is there. So what happens is it's, it's also lustful. So that, again, is very clear in the Bible. Jesus talks about it and says, if a man looks at a woman uh, in a lustful manner, he has caused adultery. So that in itself shows us that uh, it brings about lust. Masturbation does bring about lust. Masturbation also cultivates uh, poor emotional management. Um, so sometimes, let's say when you're bored, when you're angry, when you're upset with certain things, or things are not really going your way, there is a tendency to use self sexual gratification as a coping mechanism. So that's when it begins to become addictive, because every time you're upset or you're in an emotional difficulty, you need something to put you up back in, into place. So that in itself helps us understand that uh, it gratifies the flesh a lot more than it does the spirit. So when we look at a summary of what we just spoke about, uh, masturbation in itself affects the body, it affects our emotions, it affects our thoughts because it has to do with, with the kind of pictures and um, ideas that we play in our mind and also it affects our spirit. So when all of this is not in line with God's word, because God wants us complete, he wants us as whole people. And when all these areas have been brought into sin through masturbation, yes, we do understand that it is something far that violates God's purpose for us. Yeah, I think the other thing I wanted to talk about was a lot of people probably are already addicted and, you know, go through an addiction, you know, what would your advice be to them to get out of it? Mm -hmm. And um, it's, not that e it's not as easy as just, you know, just going and just stopping one day, but like, what would you advise them? So that's so relevant. Uh, yeah. uh, and, and I know that that can be a silent struggle for many, exactly. for many people. Exactly. Uh, it's almost like they are in their closet and they just cannot bring this out in the mm. open because it's, it's a, a really private uh, struggle for them. So when does it form into an addiction? I think the, the, the most important feature when it comes to an addiction is a sense of craving that comes, a, a desire to keep into, uh, into that practice over and over again. When masturbation takes up a lot of your other space and time, when it, when it affects your uh, your work, when it affects your personal life, affects your relationships, affect your other um, activities, that, that's when we call that an addiction. And uh, an another point is when the person really looks 
at masturbation as something like a, like a pullout, something that, that helps them to cope with life. That's when masturbation can turn to be an addiction. What is the help that they require? I think one of the most important things is to reach out for help. Reach out to someone who uh, can help them to discuss the issue, to lead them through it, because often these kind of areas require someone who you need to be accountable to, because it's not something that they, the person may be able to do within themselves. So some kind of an accountability, like a spiritual mentor or a pastor or a counselor, who can really help them to deal with the issue. Because it's like you, you so rightly said, it's not something that can just go off uh, you know, at, at like, like one sitting with, with a pastor or a counselor. It's a process in itself. Most importantly, I believe that uh, just like any other sin, God sees masturbation just like any other sin. And there is a way out that he makes for, 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 for masturbation as well. So to come to him, to bring our sexual appetites to him, our desires, the struggles that we feel, um, you know, one on one, just right with God, just being completely open with him and discussing that with him also helps and is, is a big way of how we can get that, you know, the grace and the mercy to deal with such an issue. Then also, like I always say, to keep the, yourself busy uh, because as we had earlier established, boredom is something that really pulls people back into sexual sin. I hope I answered yeah, that. For yeah, you. That was good. Right. That was yeah. really good. So I had a question about same-sex relationships and homosexuality. Uh, the world accepts and, um, and really promotes this, right? Um, as a Christian, what should our stance be? And uh, should we accept them or should we judge and exclude them? That's, that's a good question, Joshua. And, and uh, I think we all know people who go through these struggles and as believers sometimes we are clueless, we are um, a little iffy about where we kind of take the stand. So when we deal with a situation like this, I'd like to think of it as having two opposing reactions in play. One is dis disapproval and the other is compassion. Now these two are elements of biblical love that we have to roll out when we are helping or dealing with people who are in a homosexual relationship or who are contemplating one or who are who, who have, um, uh, have same-sex uh, uh, relationships. So what do I mean by disapproval? So when we look at the Bible, the Bible is extremely clear about homosexuality. In fact, in Romans, it talks about how homosexuality is a degrading passion. Now, we sometimes think that homosexuality is new or is only prevalent in our day and age. But this is something that has been there right from the beginning. Look at Sodom, Gomorrah age, you have that there. And if you look down at the New Testament, the, the church at Corinth, um, the, um, the, the place, they were practicing homosexuality. So it was a norm there. It was a cultural practice over there. So when Paul addresses the, Cor uh, the Corinthian church, he tells them, do not be deceived. Do not be deceived of homosexuality and adultery and fornication. So that is something that God has very clearly spoken about in his word. He has a design, as we established in our first few questions, that it is a design between one man and one woman. And that is the sanctity of a relationship. But anything that falls away from that truth is definitely not part of his, his liking. Now, even as we have established that, that the word disapproves or God disapproves homosexuality, how do we deal with somebody like that? That's, that's actually a practical question. How do I deal with someone who has, who is in such an issue? I think the answer is compassion. So when we talk to them or when we, when we see them, we see them in the light of love. We love the person for who he is and not for what he's done. Um, we address them for their uniqueness right um, and i think the focus also needs to be not on their sexuality but on their spirituality because all of us need god and the fact that there are times that we 
run away from God into very many different passions, a way to get them or, to, or a way to interact with them is to help them see their need for God, the need that only God can fulfill what they may be internally looking for. Also to understand that through um, uh, the issue of homosexuality, it, it's only kindness that can bring them to repentance. And that's, that's a very clear scripture that brings the kindness of God is what brings them to repentance. So if you as a friend are able to show them love, able to show them acceptance, but still stand your ground on what the truth says, it definitely enables them to look at the situation. You may not be able to change their understanding, but if you are there with them, journeying them with them through their, through those, those issues, you are there as, as someone who's like a light for them, someone who they can turn back to in case there is, there is an issue. So uh, even as people deal with the issue of homosexuality, I think what's really important is to value them, regard them as somebody who God loves, someone who God has chosen. And that's our stance that we should be taking when it comes to homosexuality. Right. Thank you. I think the uh, question I have about this is, um, you know, what some people say that they are born this way. I mean, they were born this way. They, it's not that they cultivated over the years by, um, if you had to put aside media and culture and everything and just say, from the time, some parents say from the time my son was four or five, I, I knew that he would be, mm -hmm. uh, um, you know, he wasn't attracted to the opposite sex. Mm -hmm. I mean, is that, is that God's design or is that a chain? I, I can't understand that. Mm -hmm. And if you could throw some light on that, if mm -hmm. that's okay with you. So. When you look at research, research actually gives you conflicting answers. Uh, some do say, some research does say that that is absolutely false. There is no, you're not born with a sexual orientation. Okay, it is cultivated over time. And there is some research that negate this truth as well. But from the light that we see, from what we see in the world, when we look at creation in itself, God made man and woman. So that's, that was God's design. That's the way God um, established the earth with a man and a woman to enjoy sexual relationships. What should be our focus? I think our focus should be on what the word says. Um, so even if there may be people, you know, we cannot get into arguments about uh, about the, the source of, of uh, homosexuality, but I think what is important is to stand um, uh, firm in the truth that God does expect all our desires, all our orientations, all to be submitted to Him. So even if there's someone comes and says, hey, I am like this, I think what, it, what we require, what we ask is so that they would be um, they would submit those passions, submit them in accordance to what God has asked or God, God really explicitly talks about in the Word because that's His design, right? So we, we do look at not getting into an argument with them, but then help them to see the reality of the Word because the Word in itself will open their eyes. It says it will um, open blind eyes. It will take off the 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 um, the stone and, and you know make it into into flesh so I think that's where we can we can focus on so that's all we have time for today and I thank you so much for the questions we hope you enjoyed uh, uh, this uh, topic on sexual purity before we close uh, could we just together pray Father Lord we thank you for your design of sexuality and marriage we thank you because you are the designer of every good thing and your word tells us what is good for us. We ask, Lord, that we will be in line with what you have given us. Father, and that we would love your word, we will love uh, what you call for us in your word. Lord, we pray for, for these young people who have who have these struggles, Lord, we ask for your spirit and for your grace to take them along through, through these times. We thank you because you keep us in, in your power. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you once again for tuning in to Living Strong. 
uh, we hope to meet you next time when we talk about digital dependence. Till then, live life the Jesus way. Hi there, we're so delighted to introduce to you our free church app. Uh, this app is loaded with features and resources that will greatly enrich your life. So head out to the app or Google Play stores, search for All People's Church Bangalore and download the app right now. It's going to greatly enrich your journey with God. All People's Church is happy to announce the release of three new publications. Receiving God's Guidance, Offenses, Don't Take Them, and Water Baptism. These are available for free. You can use these resources for your personal study or in small groups, churches and ministries. So download these at apcwo.org slash publications or request a free copy by writing to us at contact at apcwo.org. APC's Bible College and Ministry Training Center in Bangalore offers hands-on training and preparation for ministering in the supernatural power of the Holy Spirit along with doctrinally sound study of God's Word. We believe in developing the whole person for ministry, emphasizing godly character that's deeply rooted in the Word and a life with powerful demonstrations of signs, wonders and miracles. Admissions are now open for the academic year 2020 for the following courses, a one-year certificate in theology and Christian ministry, a two-year diploma in theology and Christian ministry, a three-year bachelor's degree in theology and Christian ministry, and a three-month short-term Bible course in Varanasi starting every September. For application forms and brochure, please visit apcwo.org slash Bible College all People's Church Bible College and Ministry Training Center is accredited by NATA.